Okay, this is your virtual machine shop instructor, Ed here, teaching from the uh, remote STC Precision Studios in Venice, Florida. I am uh, here with my online training system. I have the, uh, the class uh, precision machining logo here, and we got my Haas uh, G Code simulator. And my faithful uh, pup, Sydney. Sydney, hello, hello, Sydney. Say hello. Right there, you go. She's keeping an eye. She's keeping a. She's actually watching out for the uh, UPS guy. Okay. I'm going to talk about uh, the online training system. I really am a believer in the immersed to learn system. Uh, for your new guys, you're completing the OCPA section, and you should be down in this area right here. Pretty much wrapping it up. I added on the uh, little Titan tutorials and uh, some beginnings of fusion training down here. Hopefully, you all have. Fusion you have ten minutes left of computer time. Oh, my computer's going to kick me off. I have a setting on here that kicks me off every two hours, so I won't be on here all the time. So you should be wrapping up that course, and you'll be getting into this one. Uh, nuts and bolts and hardware, milling machine, video series, uh, manual mill, this says testing. And then we're going to get into CNC setup procedures, machine operator, using the probing system. Titans of CNC Academy Mill, a little bit of the G Code School, and first project, Mill Project 1. And then we have manual lathe video series, precision measurement, and prep test for uh, your NIM certifications. Uh, the veterans uh, should be wrapping up this course here. It should be down past materials. A lot of these are prepping tests. I want you to take all this testing and we're really not doing the manual mill test but I need to do manual milling for grade. Um, and then we have the starting of lathe setup school. I'll give a little quick demonstration on here. So this one's got some lathe series like uh, this is a four axis lathe with a parts catcher. In the front, turning the outside. Alright, so that's a little bit of taste of, uh, it's like a lathe that can do milling. And let's jump ahead to the parts catcher right here. Oops, I hit the rewind button. Parts catcher, just like we have. There we go. thing about the parts catcher is a lot, of, a lot of shops don't have a parts catcher. They'll put like a laundry basket down there or something to catch it. So, but um, yeah, we have the uh, chip conveyor and the parts catcher with nice demo. All right, so this will be a little bit of intro and this is all on lathe setup. You really want to dig into this because I never used to have this course before, but once you do your online training, you're much more prepared at the machine. 
Everybody should download this Philips Machinist app up here. This has a lot of your um, G codes, calculations, stuff like that. And how to set tool offsets, how to use the uh, the offset uh, tool presetter up here. Um, a little bit on, let's see, view this file. This is my CNC lathe setup school PowerPoint. I'll go through it right now. All right, the lathe is X and Z coordinate. Z is left to right and X is in and out. So Z positive, Z negative. Then, this is our machine right here. So machine home is in the upper right hand corner viewed from the door. Then uh, how do we set the locators? Uh, all right so here's your home position and here is the lathe's chuck and the center of the chuck is always going to be considered x0 on a two-axis lathe. So to set x you need to know where the center is. You the have five is minutes left of computer time. Thank you. Uh, the tool setter is calibrated to find that position to center. Uh, manual machining would be take a cut and then measure what you have and then calculate how to get the center. All right, so like in this case here, if we had X negative 5.456 inches, distance and direction. So this is a negative direction. And then you got to calculate the diameter. So it's going to shift it from here to here. Now the probe does that automatically. Uh, in manual machining, you have to add that in. So that the tool tip knows where the center of the spindle is. All right, Z is pretty simple. Uh, Z is just the distance to the front of the part or the probe. All right, here is a talk about tip direction. This is an insert up here. And uh, most inserts have a, a nose, it's like up here, see this little radius up here? They all have some kind of nose radius on there, or what they call TNR. Um, 164th, 132nd, these are very common. And you also have to set up which way is the uh, tool pointing. Most most of them are, are tip direction three. Boring bars or other tools are usually two because they're internal tools. And anything that is like a drill or a tap goes straight on would be tip direction seven. So these are the most common. All right, so when you do this setup in here, uh, the probe setup is going to ask you which tip direction. You have to enter that in. And Renishaw probe is expensive. Move tool away before tool changes. You might see some bash marks on here. All right, so that's a little quickie on, on setup. You're trying to align Z distance so you can coordinate all the tools to the front and you want them all to be aligned to the middle. All right, so this is all that and a discussion about a very important G code that only applies to lathes and this is a G50 or what I call the rev limiter. Uh, this video could tell it way better than, than I could. And a discussion here on manual setup of lathe. I would say half the machines out there are manual setup head with no probe but you can do it pretty easily but this is all good prep material to get you there okay let's go back here and that's setup school which would be the end of C and another one setup basics this is pretty detailed stuff this is a chuck installation how to do soft jaw cutting, a discussion on lathe collets, we have both systems, and also tailstock support, and final exam on that. And then you uh, 
First shifters are going to get into all lathe here, all all lathe here. It'd be lathe, Titan lathe, little G code lathe, and there's a programming certification for the lathe, and of course a CNC operator too. So this is a practice test for operations and practice test for programming. And here's a discussion on multi-axis lathe. You have one minute left of computer time. And some high-level math. And then probably not as important as the grinding and mirror surface, stuff like that. So uh, I'm just going to cut that off right there. That was a little discussion on uh, probably on your first shift, guys. And let me just pause this for a minute. Okay, I'm back. I just had to take a break. So I covered the um, full-timers A and B course. These are all the courses, by the way, because... Then we get your techs. Uh, you should be through the Renish Mill. This is an in depth uh, discussion and learning on the Renish probing system, prep test for CNC milling operations, and then there's a programming certification. And act actually, this does have like one course credit in college. Let's just review this. Pretty much I would like everybody to get to this level. Uh, this is actually uh, CNC mill but hand code. Um, so, and also this is a, an example of a gd &T print. So it's kind of good to at least dig into this a little bit. So this is the print. You have to make this part with hand code. Can't be uh, cam generated. And this is the downloadable print right here. I can discuss, probably what I'll do is I'll do a uh, print, print reading uh, update as far as what to read on prints. But I'll just go over this one real quick. Anytime I look at a print, this is the title block. These are the tolerances right here. And these are just notes, special notes. Like break all sharp edges, surface finish to be 63 micro inches maximum. This is a revision block. Some guy named LW approved these on these dates. Honestly, not that important. The only thing that's important is whenever you're making parts, that you you have the blueprints and everything for the current revision. They never usually make the older versions. But if you're not being supplied with the right paperwork, you may not have everything you need. So you need you do need to be identify that. All right, I usually start on the lower left and go around a circle. Like this one here. This is a front view, and the slash marks are a sectional view, like a saw cut. So if you follow the AA line, a, this is like a zigzag saw cut. The whole intention of this is to get the inside view of these holes. So you can see this one is through. This one is not through with a drill point. Notice where the depth is calculated. It's not to the point of the drill. This one is not a drill point. Flat bottom. This is through drill point, right? So this is a slot. Slot. And these are through holes. Alright, where's my zero, zero? Zero, zero, right here. And this has datums. This is a GD and T style print. I'm looking for A. A. A is the primary datum. And it's usually the one that everything's going to be based on. So a flatness card, that's a flatness symbol. That usually goes without saying that the A datum always has a flatness column. They want it to be wicked flat. So that's 5,000 zone, which would be. From perfect would be two and a half thousandths up and two and a half thousandths down, of up and down bumps. All right, now we look for B, B, perpendicular to A. Anything in a rectangular block is a GD and T print. And this is going to be your tolerance, not this. This is your tolerance. All right, so they're saying B needs to be perpendicular to A, and then C right here needs to be perpendicular to A and B. So you can see it's like a building block. And it has other ones, D and E. These are kind of unusual to have the uh, 
4 and 5. Usually you have A, primary, secondary, and this is called tertiary, if you ever want to remember that word. Okay, I look at the big numbers. Uh, 0, 2.5. 2.5 doesn't have a rectangle around it, so therefore, this is the tolerance. It has two digits after it, therefore it's plus or minus 10. Okay, down to here, it's 3.5 inches long with a two-place tolerance. That's the rectangle, right? Then we have this thing here, and it would be nice to have an isometric view, but you got to kind of imagine this as it's an island, or technically they call it a boss sometimes. We'll just call it an island. So these have rectangular dimensions, which means it's got some kind of GD&T tolerance associated to it. So let me look here. This is 30 degrees. That says 1.125. That's to the slot. That's to that hole. That is to the hole. This is the angle. Dimension, dimension. That's to the hole. C. What's C mean? C is down here. This is. I think the print, uh, the draftsman did it this way because if he put all these numbers up here, it gets to be too busy looking. So he's saying the radius is 0 0.450 and the x and y coordinate is this coordinate in rectangles, by the way. Uh, who is calling me? So anyway, this whole boundary, this whole boundary, you see this thing right here? This is called profile of a surface, which is like a flatness, only this is not flat, it's a irregular shape. And this symbol here means all around, all around. They use this a lot in welding. Um, so they're saying the zone of tolerance to A and E is six thousandths, and they give you a little bit more room in A, E, and D. To be honest with you, I don't really worry about this. I'm trying to make it perfect anyway. And if I make it within a couple of thou, it's probably going to fall right in. Most people just want you to have an understanding of what these mean. The inspector needs to be the decider of if it's good or not. And the last one of the holes. See, so it says all holes, and this is a target. This will be usually associated with the round objects or holes. So they're saying that target has to be within six thousandths diameter, perfect, to A, B, and C datum. Okay, so these these tolerances are not these. I'll tell you, I work with a bunch of old timers that just could not grasp this. They were used to this system, and this system has been around a long time. So anyway, we'll continue on. So this is the part right there, you know, made by many people before, and and this is the plan that I put right here. View the file. And I suggest suggested tool list and ways to program. So it's hand programming like any other hand programming. Okay. And there's a final exam here. Okay, we go back to the uh, the tech stuff. So, mill programming, practice test, certification, and I added on Mastercam mill, multi-axis machining, and Verisurf. Right now I'm going to consider Mastercam mill optional. Uh, you have to download the HLE edition you know, on your home computer to do that. But if you need any help with that, I'm more than willing to help you with that. This one you really want to dig into is multi-axis. Uh, multi-axis lathe, four and five axis milling. A lot of it on programming considerations and setup. Definitely on setup. How to set set one up. So I think everybody needs to learn that to understand the multi-axis world. Where are we? Semester three. And now you're into semester four, finish line, which is pretty much all lathe. 
same thing I discussed before. We're just just concentrate on your lathe stuff. Don't worry about this end stuff. You want to know how to set up and run a lathe? Some Titans uh, lathe parts here, uh, and then some hand coating parts. So pretty much the same as the mill. I actually think the lathe is easier to learn because once you actually learned how to run the Haas and all that, and there's only two axes and they'll not not as many tools, so I think it's a lot easier. You just got to think lathe, not mill. So that's pretty much as long as you keep on plugging away on these and do the other Google Classroom stuff that I've been giving you, um, should be okay. Oh, I forgot to put my hot hat back on. I was outside uh, putting chlorine in the pool. Okay, me and my faithful uh, CNC Tech uh, Sydney will be signing off, and uh, hopefully uh, it's a 20 minute video, but we'll meet on Thursday at noon for the Kahoot live session and do the Kahoots that are assigned to you. Uh, those are also due, they're due on Thursday, so they're not live, they're a challenge. And then any fusion files you want to send, please send them by Google Classroom and, um, you know, if you want a little review on that. So I've opened that, opened the door in the fusion area. And you can just keep on plugging away. I'm doing the same thing. I'm I'm catching up on my Titan building blocks. Uh, I'm doing some other fusion stuff. So I'm continuing to learn all this stuff too. Okay, so talk to you later. And um, just keep on plugging away a couple hours a day. That's all you need to do. Um, you know, it's actually kind of good. I, I don't have to get up very early. You know, I have a problem getting to school on time. So... This works for me really good. Okay, this is Ed, the CNC dude, signing off.